Good morning to another off-road venture. Today I'm doing a solo trip. I'm just leaving one of the first area here. I was here way early morning. I don't, I don't want to film any of this area here because it's a secret place. So I'm going to go ahead and air up and then we're going to head down to Hatcher Pass for an off-road trail. And that I will film for you. 37. I went down to about 15 psi for this road here. And now I'm going to bump it back up to 30 psi. And then once we get to Hatcher Pass, we'll go ahead and drop it again. With these big tires now, I definitely need a bigger air compressor. Um, the Vire, they make a bigger version. And I might consider getting a bigger one, or I might consider putting an onboard air compressor system in the future. But we'll see how that goes. Come along, enjoy the trip. goes down to the Palmer side so it all depends on which way you're going from and which way you want to explore but uh, this is all pavement for a while and then after that it's gonna turn into a dirt road and we'll go from there to the pass we're finally on the unpaved road of Hatcher Pass from Willow to Palmer so this road is very doable uh, doable for a lot of tourists if you want to just draw your car, draw your SUV, you don't need anything that's off-road rig. Uh, a lot of people just come out here with a regular SUV all-wheel drive and you can still enjoy this road, this pass they call it. Um, once you start going off the trails and off the side trail, that's where you want to be very cautious. And that's where you want to have an off-road rig. But if you want to stay on the main road here, it's totally doable with a uh, all-wheel drive vehicle or just any regular vehicle because um, this road here it's really well maintained once they open it for the summertime they maintain it and make sure it's all nice and great um, gravel and stuff like that so I'm gonna find a good place to air down real quick because I don't want to drive with 30 psi I want to make it more plushy so let's find a place to pull over and air down well, here's a nice place to pull over and finally stretch my legs. Oh, it's been raining all night and all morning. And right when I got into the pass here, it finally stopped raining. Still overcast, but it's really nice that it's wet because if it was dry right now, this road, get, this road here gets super dusty. So I'm going to go ahead and air down real quick. You guys all know my Land Cruiser already. After I put these 37s on, a um, couple of days after that, I decided to take off the spare wheels because it was just so, it's so heavy and I don't really need that spare wheel carrying it around town. And just for like these kind of trips, I don't need it. So whenever I go on a big one week expedition or something like that, I'll go ahead and put on the spare wheel. But right now it's just useless weight right now. So these are the 37. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I air down. So the way I air down is I have my um, pressure gauge and a valve stem removal. There's all kind of tools out there <coughs> to help assist you um, air down and I have used them before but I like the old style way. I just have my valve stem. I remove the valve stem. I like to check the pressure real quick. So we're at 32. I just remove the valve stem. I'm going to go ahead and air it down to like maybe 15 or 20. Because this is an easy trail. It's nothing crazy. There's a lot of rocks on this trail though. Make sure you hold your valve stem, don't lose it. So I'll let the air out once I'll, I'll let the air out for a couple of seconds and then I put my pressure gauge back on it and check this check the pressure. So this is how I do it. About 22 right now. Twenty is actually really good for this run right here, Bob. I like it a little bit softer. I want to test it out. I want to test how good these tires are. And then once I'm satisfied, I just go ahead and screw in my valve stem. 
and we're at 10, 2, 4, 6, we're about, we're about 16 PSI. So that's how I do it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the rest of the three tires and we'll get back on the road. Well, it looks like I just jinxed, jinxed myself. It's starting to rain again. There's a couple ATV riders that um, were trucks that were hauling their ATVs. They're like just checking up on me. I'm like, yep, I'm good. I'm just earing down. So it's always good um, that people always do that. Look out for each other. Travel beyond this point, not recommended. Well, that's for the winter time. So during the winter time, they do close this road here, or at least this section from here to the pass. And uh, it's just because they don't want to maintain it. But before this, uh, they do maintain it because there's a lot of residential. People do live on this uh, be before where we enter, before that gate right there. But from here on, there's no res there's not much residential here. Um, this is the actual pass. There's no residential, and it's all recreational area. So if you're visiting Anchorage or if you're visiting Alaska and you can't make it to the Denali Road from Cantwell to Paxton, this is like a short version of it. It's not as pretty as it is up there, but it's still really nice and pretty. This is like a short version. You know, you're going from one town to one town, and uh, it's unpaved, lots of camping, lots of sightseeing. There's a river that runs around here. And definitely worth checking out, man. Um, there's two trails that I know for sure that I've done up here, but then I know there's more trails up here. But one of the trails is Upper Purchase, which is a more difficult trail. And then the one that we're heading to right now is called Craigie Creek. Craigie Creek, which is a bit more easier. Uh, you know, easy and funner, very rocky, single trail lane. And it looks like we caught up to those guys that were checking up on us. These about three, three trucks with ATVs. You can see here there's lots of places to just pull off the road and uh, people could just camp right here i didn't want to keep tailing those guys so i'm gonna pull over real quick and let those guys get ahead get ahead and then we'll catch up in a bit look how sunny it is it's so sunny the sun's trying to peek out but it's downpouring rain right now it's crazy half of the beginning of the summer is all nice and sunny drought super dry wildfire alert and then right after, um, right after June, kaboom! Nothing but rain, man. Rain, cloudy weather, rain, rain, rain. So I don't know what river is this. I actually don't know the name of the river. If you guys know the name, drop it in the comment section below. Uh, but it's a nice river. It's not too deep. People used to do mining out here. Hatcher Pass is known for... I'm not sure what they're mining. Gold, copper, some kind of uh, metal out here. But we don't see much of that uh, activity anymore. People just come out here and camp and uh, recreational hiking and camping and stuff like that. Man, it is a gorgeous day though. This is Alaska, man. Um, despite the rain, you got to make the best out of it. If you're just if you're gonna be those people that wait for the rain to go before you come out and enjoy Alaska, that will never happen. You gotta enjoy Alaska whether it's dry or raining. I'm no rock expert, but if you guys love collecting rocks, there's all sorts of rocks out here. <coughs> Check out these um, nice, clean, white ones. These are really, really pretty. Look at all these. All sorts of pretty rocks out here. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah, these are so pretty. I'm going to keep these guys. And look at that. It's like white diamond. There's so many of them. They're everywhere. These white ones? Clear white ones. Oh, the water is cold. Yep, the water is chilly. Not good for a bath. So this trail right here is the trailhead for the Upper Purchase. And we done a video of this trail before a couple years ago. Eric and I and a few other people. But um, this is a really nice trail. It goes all the way back out there. People do hunting and all sorts of stuff out there. It looks like these folks are parked here. Uh, those other trucks that were in front of me, they were actually just parked right where we stopped at that river right ahead of there. And it looks like that's where they're going to be taken off of. So there must be some kind of trail back there. But this is the upper purchase trailhead. And the one that we're going to is a few more, it's a couple more miles up there down that way.
Look at that beautiful view. Whoa. The road's down there. We actually came from down there. So that's the way we came from. Right where that rainbow is. Towards Willow. Came up this hill. And now we're going to make our way up there. Uh, the trailhead for the one that we're going to is about another one or two miles. Not too far away. I got about half tank of gas right now. I did bring uh, 10 gallons of fuel. So I might dump that into the vehicle. Just so there's not a lot of weight back here once we start doing uh, once i hit that trail and i might have to remove my hitch there just so i can have more clearance on the back but man it is a beautiful beautiful morning the nice thing about these morning runs there's not a lot of people on the road right now it's a saturday but so far i've only seen two or three cars coming this way going back where we came from and then the other trucks that were off offloading their ATVs and stuff but there's not that many people on a nice sunny day there's you can see a lot of vehicles out here a lot of tourists or a lot of people that just come out to the pass but on the mornings it's always nice to come out and get the uh, early dibs on the morning it's gorgeous out here man there's rain there's sun there's a bit of wind all kind of weather out here look at that view so beautiful out here docking right here this place is also very popular for uh, berry picking people come out here and pick up blueberries I'm not sure if it's the season yet but people do come out here to do blueberry picking and just hiking in general lots of place to go hike at so here's the trailhead for Craigy Creek it doesn't have any sign that says hey come here it's a trailhead you gotta know, you gotta know. Let's go. This over here is private property, so you don't wanna go over here. This is called a lucky shot mine. Look at this trail here. This is very, very, very narrow and are very rocky as well. So make sure you air down the importance of airing down. Gorgeous, gorgeous backcountry, man. Beautiful out here. Trail is still super easy. Nothing difficult at all. A lot of, lot of rocky. A little bit of rockiness. YouTubers don't ever tell you guys this, but when they're doing self-filming, this is the most enjoyable part. Setting up the camera, running back to the car, driving up, picking up the camera. You gotta do like 20 takes to make a good video. So, I'm setting up the camera. Right here. Is this a good spot?
very very low throttle guys don't gas it let it crawl up slow crawl is your friend speed is your enemy Okay, so this is where all the rocks get bigger from here on. Um, you can see they're the size of a, you know, two basketball size. <coughs> but I want to show you guys. And it's all about choosing your line. You got to choose your line. If you're new to this, you got to make sure you have a good spotter. So for me, I'm just going to come like right here. <laughs> Somebody lost their muff flat. Yeah, so you see how these big rocks, they can definitely uh, interfere with you if you're like on 33s or whatever. This mud flat looks like it's from a Toyota. Yeah, somebody lost their mud flat. I'll go ahead and put that in the truck so we can clean up this trail. But you can see here, these rocks are pretty big. But, and this is what I want to test out. I want to climb, I want to flex on these rocks. And I want to see if my, um, I want to see if my tie rod is rubbing. I know it's going to rub, but I want to see how much, I want to see how much grinding I need to do more. And let me show you what I'm talking about for all my gearhead out there that want to see what i'm talking about but i'm the only one out here so far i haven't seen anybody out here at all and there's no cell service out here so i don't think i told anybody where i'm going mud flat's good for something so what i'm talking about right here is let me show you my tie rod so on the land cruiser the tie rod is right here and Right now, there's a lot of space because it's flexing, but when it's level, there's like maybe that much, it's like that much only from the radius arm. And you can see this divot right here that I regrinded yesterday. So we're going to see if it's going to rub or not once we flex it. But I want to flex it more I think if I had 33s, I would have struggled just a little bit. But man, these 37s and the Grizzly rear locker climbs right up here. It was spinning for a while, but it was good. I do have my uh, center diff lock on, and we were also in low gear. Take a moment to appreciate Alaska's nature. She's beautiful. I'm probably just gonna get to that mountain right there and then we'll eat some lunch and then we'll just turn back. I'm not gonna go all the way up to the uh, 
at the end of this trail there's a uh, old mining building cabin I guess you call it and I don't need to go all the way up there there's a few more difficult part up here and that's where I want to go test out and then we'll find a place for lunch this one here is gonna be a little bit more fun I can definitely go the easy route but I want to climb over these rocks and see if there's any issue so I'll go ahead and set the camera right over here a couple years ago when we did this trail uh, Robert and his trail hawk he made it up here didn't have any issue with the trail hawk That was a lot of fun. There's still quite a ways up to the end of this trail. I'm not gonna go up any further. That's plenty of fun for me already. There's a little nice pool out right here with the running water. I'm gonna go ahead and cook some lunch and get some dinner and my get some lunch in my tummy and then we'll make our way back out. It's super nice out here. Nobody's out here. It is still a little bit sprinkling, but we make the best out of it. Fresh water right here. You can see the trail right goes right over that mountain and wraps around there and look at this beautiful view a nice beaver den down there welcome to nutty news kitchen what am i cooking tonight i'm cooking the basic thing noodles ramen noodles i don't have a little nice uh awning like those overlander guys so i use my hood for this I'm just gonna go ahead and cook some noodle. Got the fur noodle. I got regular mama noodle. I'm gonna cook the mama noodle. Alright. Let's do this. Does it work? Okay, it works. I should probably wash this right here. There's a creek right there, but. Eh. Okay, fine. The thing about eating outdoors, it's a bit it's okay to be a little bit dirty, guys. It's okay to be a little dirty. A little dirt won't hurt. So we're gonna cook the mama noodle. My mother-in-law, she's uh, she likes to can salmon, so she has some canned salmon for us. I think those are red salmon that we're cooking. Can't forget the important stuff, the rice. We got some uh, warm rice or steamed rice. Close this up real quick. Ta-da! Simple is good. I think our water is ready. Ramen noodle. Nothing better than a fresh hot ramen noodle in the morning. Oil packets, throw that whole thing in there. My stomach <coughs> doesn't really like pepper anymore. So I'm not gonna use the pepper. As I, got, as I get older, my stomach is not very tolerant to spicy stuff no more. Like how I, I was back then. This is what all this is. My wife, she prepared all this. I was like, throw me some noodles, bring me a pot, bring me a fork, bring me a can of that. Bring me some rice and I'm good. So We're just going to eat off of this right here. I didn't bring a bowl or anything like that. So we'll let that simmer for 2-3 minutes. I'll do that. Mama noodle. I wish I brought some eggs. If you guys put eggs in your noodle, it's super amazing. Super delicious. Every time I've been up here, I have never seen a single wildlife. I don't see caribou. I don't see moose. I don't see bears. Um, I've seen birds. That's about it. But I've never seen any kind of big game out here it's i guess it's not the right terrain this is more like caribou terrain caribous aren't within this range here i haven't even seen any sheep or anything like that out here but this is all mountain this is all like this is all their terrain right here but 
never in my life have I seen any wildlife out here. It's been depleted, I guess. Our noodles are almost about to be ready. We're not adding any other condiments in here. I didn't bring anything. Super simple, last minute trip. I think it's good. I don't want it to be too uh, soggy. Okay, we're gonna eat right off of this. Um, hope you guys come along and enjoy with me. This is the salmon. Very good salmon. I ate this already. My mother-in-law, she gave us like uh, four cans of this or something. So we have salmon, ramen noodle, and we got rice. That's all you need, man. You don't need nothing fancy out here, guys. When I do these trips, I don't need nothing fancy, you know. I don't need a full meal. I don't need a full course of steak. That's, that's Eric right there. Eric, if you're watching this, Eric's the one who's always bringing uh, back strip or ribs or whatever. A simple meal goes a long way, man. Mmm. Mm. Delicious. Mmm. I'm sure. Cold, cold rice, no problem. Put you guys right here. Nice background behind me, right? Beautiful mountains. <coughs> you guys can watch my back in case there's a big grizzly bear behind me or something. So I left Anchorage last night, <coughs> around midnight, <coughs> went up north to one of my spots, and then after that, uh, we decided. I decided to come to Craigie Creek before I head back home. Good day so far. Delicious. <coughs> There's definitely more trails up here in Hatcher Pass to be explored um, that I've never explored yet. This hot soup's so good. Ramen noodle has never tasted so good out in the wilderness. At home, it doesn't taste that good because you know, you have options. But when you're out here, life or death situation, it's good. Oh, the salmon. I should have put the salmon into the broth here. So it can warm up. Too late now. Delicious salmon. I need to start to. Uh, I need to start canning my salmon <coughs> because whenever I catch my salmon, <coughs> I just put them in a Ziploc bag and throw them into the freezer. And if I start canning them more, I can bring them out and use them for these kind of dishes, where it's a simple, easy, quick lunch. You know. The salmon tastes good with um, ramen noodle. If you guys got canned salmon, add that to your ramen noodle next time you're cooking it.
uh, empty my gas tanks into my vehicle. And the way I do it is I use a siphon. Um, I'll show you guys that. It's a little shaker siphon that I like to use. Um, just works more easier, hands freeze, and uh, it gets most of the gas. I usually have this in my little uh, my little bag that I put on my spare tire carrier. What this is is a very simple setup. It's just a hose, and then at the end of it, there's a little shaker, and you put this into the gas jugs, shake it up, and then let gravity do its thing, and it works really good. I recommend everybody have one of these. Um, it's good for general purpose and everything. So let me dry this off real quick. Whenever you're doing this siphon, you don't want your gas tank to be on the floor. It needs to be higher from where you're putting it to. So you can see how my gas tanks are almost level with my, my fuel right here. But you also want your gas tank to be higher because this thing kind of works off of gravity. So one end, this end goes in here. Just like that, it's in. And we'll let it do its thing. We're at half tank right now on the cruiser, so it should consume two of the 10 gallon right here. And yeah, you just let it do its thing. It's quite simple, old technology, works great. And again, like I said, you want, you want the gas jug to be at least level or slightly higher and let gravity do, gravity do its thing. If you try to put try to do it where the gas jug is down here and you need to get the fuel if up there, um, it's not gonna work so well. These are the uh, Midwest can. I got off a of Harbor Freight. I made a video about those already and I love them. They work great, no leaks, nothing like that. And I highly recommend them. Looks like it took all of it already. Let me double check. You can see here, the fuel stop. Yep, I think it took all of it already. So let me go ahead and get the other jug open. The rest of this right here, you gotta hold it up high and then it'll load. You have to manually let it feed down there. There's, a, there's tons of brass casing around here. 5.56, five, 9 mil. So it looks like a lot of people were coming out here and they're shooting their guns. Um, these are all 5.56 five, right here, 2.23. Two, Lots of them right here. Hopefully this place doesn't get littered with this kind of stuff. Uh, this is a very good place to just keep it nature, um, trash free. Don't shoot your guns out here, you know. Uh, this is a great place to just come out and relax, enjoy nature, keep it clean and stuff. Always pack out your trash guys. Don't leave your trash out here. Making my way back and these two Jeeps are heading back to the front of the trailhead. So they must have came behind me, but they didn't pass where I stopped to eat dinner, lunch. So they probably just came up maybe a couple miles and then decided to turn back. I did see about um, six ladies, about six or five, five or six ladies um, backpacking up behind me, up towards the mountains. And it looks like they're gonna be staying the night or the weekend, but. They are pretty much all loaded with hiking backpacks and camp camping gears and stuff. So interesting. It's good to see people now. It's uh 1233 p.m. These two Jeeps are going really slow though. They're like super crawling. I wonder if they have maybe they ran into some issue with their vehicles and maybe they have to turn backs, but I'm not too sure. We're just gonna go slow, follow them. Slowly making my way back out of here, going downhill. So, using using low gear and brakes. If you guys love your paint job, don't bring it out here. Don't bring your vehicle out here. And also, if you have your mirrors that can fold, fold them in. Um, 
because once they hit a branch, they're just gonna fold in. So, you might as well do the, yourself the favor and fold in your mirror, so. But yeah, if you guys love your paint job and you guys care about your truck or your car, don't bring it out here. It's gonna get scratched. The trail is very, very narrow. It's like a, it's more of an ATV trail. That was the way from Crazy Creek, and now we're headed back towards the Palmer side. Still raining a little bit here and there. Cloudy, a little bit chilly up here. We're on a higher elevation right now. Nothing but green lands out here. The mountains are beautiful. Maybe uh, like next month we'll start seeing some snow coming here soon. This place here gets a lot of snow that winter time. Right now we're entering Summit Lake. At the top of this mountain, there's a lake called Summit Lake. So we're gonna be going up elevation. You can see the road from here. And the lake is on top of that mountain right there, this mountain. Here we are, Summit Lake. Nice aqua lake right here. Beautiful, beautiful lake. I don't think there's any fish in there, but people come out here and they just take photos. Sometimes you see folks in there with kayaks. And multiple trails on the mountains to get different angles. It's a really nice lake, like right in the crater. The crater of this mountain, so this is where it gets all the water. mountain and then right there there's some people right there as well so you can climb up to this mountain up to that mountain uh, there's lots of trails up there oh so it looks like there is fish in here stocked by ADFG beautiful beautiful it's always windy up here too so when you come up here it's super windy you'll get some days where it's nice and quiet but for the most part there's one guy way over there by the snow this is the road right here we came down here <laughs> zigzag way over there this trail here it's a different trail and if you go to the end of that trail there's a tunnel on the mountain crazy creek is like way behind this mountain so it's basically a big zigzag throughout this whole mountain that vehicle right down there um, the owners are right here they're picking blueberries so i saw a few people out here picking blueberries so berries must be in season but we're pretty much almost done like another mile or two mile and then we'll be back on the palmer side so we'll make our way out this right here is the end of the hatchet pass this is the palmer area now It. We'll be back on pavement soon. That road down there is all pavement. Nice view right here. Look at that. Beautiful. So the pass itself is very short. I'd say no more than 20 miles. Take you know one hour if you're just gonna blow through it. If you want to take your time, it'll be two hours. You can see here people are picking up blueberries. Must be a lot of blueberries up there. Those little red cabin, they're for rental. You can rent them. And then there's a historical gold mine down there. I can use them. You can go check that out as well. So, lots of people out here today. And 
this is the end right here. This is the Palmer side. So if you're gonna start on this side, you just start right here and exit out on Willow. I hope you guys enjoyed today's adventure vlog. I'm gonna go ahead and air up my tires and then hit the road back to Anchorage, Alaska. This is Hatcher Pass, Crazy Creek, Solo Adventure. Beautiful end of summer 2022. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Much love. I'll see you guys next time or I'll see you guys on the road. Bye-bye.